Uh, welcome everyone to today's webinar about the Assure Total View Insights for Testing. Okay, um, we'll try to keep the webinar at about 40 minutes and to have a, a bit of time for, for Q&A at the end. Um, we'll do our best to, to answer your questions. Uh, please answer question, ask questions anytime uh, in the questions pane of the GoToMeeting. You are able to type in your, your questions. And as you exit the, you know, the webinar, please fill in the, a survey form that would, we would really appreciate that. It uh, will help us improve. Now, everybody who registered to the webinar will receive a recording, a link to the recording of the webinar and the materials uh, within the next few days. Okay, so um, my name is Shir Goldberg. I will be, I'll be running the webinar today. Um, we're going to go, I'll tell you a little bit about Azure, uh, specifically later about the uh, HP LM Analytics, uh, the story of TotalView, demo, uh, talk a bit about business case, why, why do we, you know, what justifies having TotalView on top of HP uh, ALM, um, touch on advanced topics, and, uh, and uh, then pretty much take the, the QA and A. All right, so the Azure story founded, um, that's 11 years ago. We are a software company. Uh, we're focused on really providing the insights, control of, a, of IT projects through analytics, uh, providing some forecasting and, and uh, predictive analytics for uh, the software development lifecycle. Our customers are typically uh, large enterprises, right? It's, it's a large amount of ongoing programs and projects, which is difficult to, um, uh, to control. Uh, we see many companies that address analytics when they get to uh, do transformation initiatives. And current customers are, are really the large major companies in finance, insurance, telecoms, and so on, also technology and others. It's not really, um, the solution is not limited to, to a specific uh, vertical. All right, now uh, a, little bit, a little bit about uh, challenges or who needs uh, ALM analytics, All right? So let's try and cover that. Uh, let's start with the high level. You look at the program management, right? And the project, product, program management, usually they have a, a large amount of projects and or releases under them. Uh, the same applies for a large enterprise release. Now, think about the, the people on the top. They need to understand which initiatives under their umbrella really needs help, who needs some guidance, right? When we, they look at the, at the overall picture, they want to know who's going to make it on time and who, who would not. Um, over time, is the quality improving? How to do better planning, right? Uh, can you assess the overall efficiency, uh, vendor performance, or you know, single project performance within your program? How do you do that? Uh, then you have the, the next uh, group is really the center of excellence. These are the guys who try to introduce innovation, and innovation is usually introduced through a, a testing metrics framework. This is how we measure ourselves, and if we measure you know, the whole organization based on these key metrics, we can compare apples, apples to apples, right? So that's the first thing. The other thing is improve processes. I decide to change my process. How do I measure that it really works? And then understand trends, understand the, the efficiency of your team, um, mitigate risk, and definitely provide the business with better planning tools. Okay, and then you come to the you know people on the ground, pro project managers, uh, teams. They need immediate view into where do they stand, right? The project manager he needs to understand what is going on, what actions to take, um, and. Really, the, what we see is throughout this chain, metrics delivery takes too long. It's too time consuming. It's too difficult uh, uh, to, to gather it all together and really bring it uh, to the stakeholders. This whole thing should be automated. All right, so uh, to summarize what I, what I just said, it's really the whole thing is, is about to, uh, to you know, two areas is how do you gather the information and how do you provide it uh, for consumption? All right, um, now a little bit of 
about history how because this challenge is is old it's it's been around since you know the, you know for many years and uh, the vendor which is hp uh, being the the leading test management platform in the market they've tried quite many things first of all uh, it used to be called quality center of course so, so qc reports and graphs which are still in the tool however they are mostly a single project uh, visibility Later, for those of you who remember, uh, there was something called advanced reports based on Actuate that was supposed to give a cross-project solution. This has been discontinued. It didn't work uh, as expected. Excel reports have been introduced, uh, which are still in there. Executive scorecard, which was later changed to ITBA. That's, this is also discontinued now. Uh, that was supposed to cover not just ALM, but you know, it was a very big uh, and complex uh, tool. A cross project reports we these are again still around but they have a serious a uh, performance uh, limitations you cannot run them for more i think six the projects by default now we have customers with 1500 projects right so it doesn't really solve uh, much uh, business views have been introduced again performance issues and a uh, predictive analytics uh, which is uh, you know, still haven't seen it working properly. And I think HP has been working on it for a couple of years already. Okay, now the TollView story uh, really started with engaging a, a large customer trying to uh, solve the same problem. What the first thing we've done is collecting the information. And what we've created is automated data collection from across all the ALM projects into one single location. And that's a dedicated data mart. The next thing we've been doing over the years is provide dashboards on top of the data mart. And these were customer specific, very customized. And uh, the session today, we will focus on really what we, we have done recently. We collected our experience with the customer specific dashboards, gather it all together. And now we have the out of the box dashboard, uh, which is really based on the industry's common metrics, right? It, it enables very rapid deployment. Now the back end is called TollView Data and the front end is TollView Insights, right? And this is just an overview of how it works. Um, I'll start from the top. The TollView Insights is web-based. Um, it contains the Azure Metrics Library, which, which is updated uh, on a regular basis. Um, access management, it's very rich and very customizable. Okay, the back end is really the TollView data, collecting all the information together using, you know, and having a data mart, uh, having a big advantages such as a simple structure and excellent performance. All right. Now about benefits, right, of the insights for testing. And insights for testing, just to remind you, it's the out of the box dashboard, right? And being out of the box, it's a real rapid deployment. You, you get immediately cross project analytics solution for ALM, all your projects. Um, it gives insights really for different levels of, uh, of stakeholders, all the way from the managers to the delivery team themselves. You have a dedicated automated data collection engine, right? And uh, it serves as a, as a solid base for customized dashboard. Now, as you can imagine, since it's out of the box, for those of you who are familiar with, with HPLM customization, HPLM contains a set of fields that exist in every ALM project. These are system fields, and the dashboard is based on these system fields. Now, all the customers have additional user-defined fields, which are not part of this dashboard because we cannot know in advance what the, what these fields would be. Okay. Um, right. Let's go to the next bullet. So customized dashboards. So first of all, what we see customers do, they add user-defined fields. Then we see customers who add additional data sources, and these can be things such as a HR and cost uh, applications to project timelines and milestones, okay, these sort of things, and organizational structures. Um, then the last thing is really 
having a dashboard serves as a driver for standardization because think about it if I bring all the LM projects together to one place and I'm looking at the field which can be defect severity okay imagine how many different values I would have for high severity right I can tell you from experience if I, um, I had a customer with a customized field called language they had 40 variations to English right it was English Great Britain English U US, English UK, I mean, you name it. Um, and a dashboard will definitely show uh, these discrepancies. And standardization is another area that Azure specializes in. And, you know, analytics and standardization really go hand in hand. All right, now before I jump to the demo, I'd like to remind you again that uh, you can ask uh, questions at any time. Um, in the GoToMeeting uh, panel. Okay, so let's jump to the demo and I will open my browser for that. Let me just make sure my session is still valid. So as you can see, I, I log in, I open a web page. I have a bunch of, of dashboards here. We're gonna look at insights for testing. So I select the dashboard And there is a landing page with some explanation. Um, and let me guide you through what you see on the screen. All right. Uh, on the left-hand side, actually, let me start with the key metrics. So, you know, we gathered five key metrics to be on the landing page. That's the top level page. Um, we look at uh, if my projects are on time, how the requirement coverage level is, what's a defect rejection rate, uh, how long it takes me to resolve defects, and then the level of test automation, okay? Um, each of these dial has different colors. These are the thresholds. They can be custom customized uh, very easily. Um, and then we have the list of projects. And uh, the list is, is fairly long. You can see the best or the worst one up, up to you. You can, of course, uh, sort it whatever way you want. And on the left hand side, I have filters. Now the filters are, are a great tool. What I see here is, are really ALM domains and ALM projects. I have, I don't know, a couple of hundred uh, projects here. Now, we also have business lines. Now business lines is something we added to the out of the box dashboard. The customer needs to map the projects to business lines. As again, as you know, it's not part of ALM. All right, so what I can do here, uh, let's look, for example, at the defect resolution time metric. I see that for my whole organization, it, it's at around 13 days, right? Now, if I look at my retail business line, I just select it, and you can see the, the screen refreshed, right, to reflect my selection, and now I see retail is at 36 days, so it's well below my uh, company average. Now, if I go to investment, it goes to seven days, okay? So they're doing much better than retail. So if I'm at the center of excellence, I, I can already tell something about that, right? I have a business line that works probably better and more efficient uh, than the other. All right, um, let's look at, uh, we are looking at investment and I wanna see not all defects, I wanna focus on critical and high defects. These are the ones that I really wanna know what's going on with. So seven days for all defects. However, for critical and high, it's five days, okay? Now, this information contains all the history from this organization. Now, as you can see, I have a filter called all releases and active releases, right? So I don't care about what has happened. I wanna know what's going on now. So I select active releases. You see the information change, I'm still at five days. So now I have two filters selected and uh, I wanna drill down because you can see I have, a, I have a project here with 272 days and another one with 183. These, these numbers are not good, right? So let's see how bad the problem really is. So I click on difficult resolution time and what I'm getting here you can see there is an explanation. The area, so the size of each square in my heat map, represents the number of defects. 
So yes, I have RDR with the 273 days to resolve a defect. However, you see how tiny it is. We're talking six defects, right? Compared to something like project simplicity with, with a 1500 or uh, this RPM volume with, with over 100 defects. Okay, so yes, it's important to know where my problem area is, but I also need the scale of the problem, right? And that's exactly what this heat map does. Now, the heat map works the same way for any other uh, metrics on this level. Okay, so I can see if I, if I switch to a defect rejection, I can see who is, you know, where are my problems and so on. Now, I can drill down a bit further. So if I have now a project, so I can select the RPM volume, for example, and now I see the active releases within these projects. And I see resolution time is pretty bad for this release. <clears throat> Again, it's only three defects, right? And I can, by the way, I can always go back and see what I'm looking at. So these are my selections. And I can always create bookmarks from what I'm looking at. So for example, if I'm responsible for the RPM volume uh, projects, I would always want to come back to these projects. I don't want to have to drill down through the whole uh, uh, chain again and again. All right, that's what bookmarks are for. All right, um, so let me remove some of these uh, filters. And I'm going to move from the, the project comparison, I'm going to move to a single project view. And it's not only a single project, it's also, a, it can be a single release. And let me look for a specific uh, project. For example, I'm gonna select a search for one project. You can see the search functionality is really ha handy, right? I can easily find what I want. So I'm looking now at a single project. Now think about your organization have access to this, right? So every project, every release, can take a look and see uh, this screen relevant to their uh, to the data they're responsible for. Now, what I see here, I see on the top, uh, um, it's kind of a, you know, we, we brought together uh, the valid information. For example, for requirements, I wanna know the, the pass rate, the coverage of requirements, and are my requirements stable, okay? Uh, test instances, you can see I don't have any block tests, which is great. I am at 96% execution, my pass rate is 88, and automation level is fairly poor. And defects, uh, I can tell you I have in total almost 4,000 defects. However, only 15 are outstanding, only one is critical outstanding, okay? Uh, defect density, defect resolution, uh, everything is here. Now, you might have some questions how these things are calculated. Uh, the product does come with a whole, with a complete uh, metrics catalog that explains each and every metrics. Okay. In addition to that, we put some uh, explanation here. Uh, you can see these um, tool tips. Okay. All right. Um, below, what you see are really the I'm looking at throughput. Uh, now, this project maybe is not the best example, but I can see how fast am I doing things and uh, I see how fast I should be doing things, right, in order to, to meet a deadline. Now I'm looking at, at many historical releases, that's why this is at zero. Uh, how old are my defects, how my text execution progress, and how my defect uh, uh, trend lines are. <clears throat> okay, now if I look, go to specific areas, I will go into, uh, let's say, requirements, right? What can I say about requirements? And one thing I can look at is, how the requirements are being created in my project. Where do they come in? Okay, at what stage? Um, I can tell you if I look at requirement type that all my requirements in this project, all of them are functional requirements. Okay, now if I take the, if I take the filter off, you see that throughout my organization, almost all my requirements are functional. I have some business requirements, I have some non-functional, if I can zoom in, I can look at business requirements, right? And I can tell you these exist in only four projects, this rating core, uh, credit estimates, and structured finance interface. Everything grayed out is not within my filters. Okay, now let's go back to our, uh, our previous project.
Okay. Give it a second to refresh. So you can see the use of filters is, is really very uh, uh, handy. Oops. Okay, let me try that again. Okay, here we go. Right, the other thing when I look at requirements, uh, I want to see, uh, focus on, on this graph on the right-hand side, is how many test cases cover a requirement? And you can see the average is one test case per requirement, which is probably not that great, right? Uh, I do have a couple of requirements with over 30 test cases. And uh, I can actually show you which one these are. I can zoom in, show you the requirements, and tell you, okay, these two are covered by, uh, what was it, 32 uh, test cases. Okay, if now think about somebody who's responsible for best practices. Uh, let's look again across my whole organization. And you can see I have some requirements with over 700 test cases. Okay, not very good. I can zoom in, I can tell you exactly which requirements those are in which projects and so on. All right, I switch to testing. Testing, uh, as you know, I want to see the progress. How am I doing execution versus a past? Um, I can see how execution is happening, uh, let's say, uh, every month or even every day, if I look on a, on a, you know, on a smaller initiative. And then I have things such as uh, how many steps I have per test case, right? So this project is pretty good, over six steps per test case, right? Uh, I've, most of other projects in, in this uh, database has zero or one. Uh, steps per test case, and then how long does it take me to get a, a past run? On average, it's one time. Some of them took five times. Okay, that's the worst case scenario in this case. All right, I'll I'll jump to defects. A, let's look at different characteristics. Okay, so I have uh, several things here. First of all, a you can see my defect distribution. And let me, what you don't see here is the closed defects. They are out of picture. We decided to leave rejected here. That's why it looks pretty big. Now I can get rid of that as well if I just zoom in, right? So you can see I have 11 new defects uh, and so on. So these are, these are really the outstanding defects I need to deal with, right? And that's again, my project, and I can switch projects, I can switch releases, it's uh, very handy. Okay, let's switch uh, to a project called uh, Aero Global. It has a bit more information. So you can see what's going on here. I have less new, I have more open, unlike the previous project. And the next thing I can do, um, I can look at state transitions. So I can say, I can actually uh, uh, look, for example, what happens to defects that are fixed, right? And here what I'm looking for is to see that my team is working properly. So you can see I have, I have 821 defects that have been, at some point in their life cycle, they've been fixed. And they move, most of them move to the ready to test. Okay, which is great. That's what I want. Now uh, let's switch from a, from fix to ready to test and see what happens there. So you can see almost all of them going to closed. The left, the other ones went to reopen. That's excellent, right? That's exactly what I want to see happening. Okay, so this, this sort of, uh, of analytics is uh, definitely possible. Now, since I'm in this screen, let me explain something about user-defined fields. Okay, actually, let me go back to a uh, different characteristics, remove the filter, and um, right. So, as I mentioned, all the metrics on the screen are based on system fields, right? However, user-defined fields exist in the data model. They, they are behind the scenes. And what we've done for the purpose of this demo, uh, we actually listed them. 
right? So for example, I see these are the user-defined fields for my defects. And uh, let's look at the user-defined field called defect stage. These are the values, right? And that actually shows when the defect was detected. So if I press regression testing, okay, I see that I have eight rejected, nothing open, nothing new. Okay, if I go to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, user testing, you can see again, I've only rejected, okay? Uh, so that's, uh, this is a very simplistic way of showing how uh, user-defined fields can be used. I, I'll get back to this uh, a bit later. All right, the next thing is um, I'm going to discuss is predictive analytics, and that gets uh, people quite excited. And let me use a bookmark to get there. So I'm selecting predictive execution. And what you see on the screen, um, let me just do a bit of a layout thing here. Okay, so what you see on the screen, I have a really a single release is selected. I can tell you that you see this release belongs to Project Simplify. It's under the investment business line. And what I see on the screen, let me try to uh, to explain. I know the number of tests. I currently need to execute, right? I know how many I've executed already. Um, so basically the, the number of tests that I need to execute is 243. And my test execution rate is about, it's about 25 test cases a day. And you can see the, the velocity in the graph below. All right, that means that it would take me about 10 days to complete my testing. Uh, however, this release has an end date, which is uh, August 1st, and my forecasted end date, if we count 10 days, it brings me to August 3rd. That means I'm two days late. Okay. Now, what can I do about it? If I'm responsible for testing of this release, I still have 10 days to go. I can use a what-if analysis and see what happens if I scale up my testing team. Okay. So, for example, if I add 20% uh, uh, to my testing team. You can see I'm still a day behind. If I go to 40, I should be better here. The, the, the predicted date turned to green, and you can see I'm one day ahead of schedule. What this means, actually, to get to 40, you know, 40% 40 extra effort, you can see the testers delta. I need to add test 10 testers. Okay, now think about this tool available again to every every test initiatives you have. Anything, a release, a project, a, an application within a project, right? If you use the user-defined field, all of these things are, are definitely doable. And uh, it gives an excellent tool for, for planning um, and prediction. Okay, the other side is really, uh, test execution is one thing I want to know about, but I also want to understand what happens to defects. So again, I keep the same release, I'm looking in defects, and um, what I can tell you here, let's just get this a bit to a smaller scale. Okay, I was looking two years in the you know back. Uh, what I see here is the following. First of all, it's bad news, right? You can see that I'm uh, 36 days late, it's red, uh, but let's understand how we calculated it. So I'm going back to, let's start actually from the middle here. This is the current, current status. I have 500 outstanding defects, okay? I know how many defects per day I close. However, this is not the complete picture because I still have testing to do. And I know how many test, how many defects I was detecting per test case I run, and the, the number here is really bad, right? It's almost one to one. Um, now, so I have 558 outstanding defects. I'm predicting I'm going to detect another 231 defects. So the total expected number of defects bring me to over, you know, almost 800, and that would take me 44 days to uh, fix. Okay, now I can look at a different release. Uh, let's look at a release. 
which is a, I think it's a bigger one. Okay. Um, no, okay. The interesting thing about this series, first of all, we are, we are doing very good. It will take me only 16 days uh, to cross all the defects and the end date is the end of the year. So I'm perfectly fine here. There might be some mistakes somewhere, but that's what the data tells me. However, you can see I selected a single release. This release spans across all of these projects. Okay, so that's a real uh, enterprise release. It exists uh, in, I don't know how many, probably around 25 different projects. Okay, now, since I have this release and it's cross project, I want to understand how this release looks across the different projects. So what I do, I go to the cross entity comparison. And that's a bit of a self-service kind of screen. Now, what you see here, this is my release is still selected. These are all the projects that are part of this, re that where this release exists. And what I can tell you here, I can see the list of projects. I can tell you which ones has the largest number of instances to execute. Uh, where are my uh, critical and high outstanding defects, right? So you can see these are the top and so on. And you see how, how powerful this, this tool is. It's very good to analyze this information. Now I can do something else. I can go uh, to my investment business line and I can remove the release. And now I see all my projects in the investment business line. I can compare them. I can see who does most automation, right? Um, I can look at active releases alone versus all the historical data, okay? So all of these things are possible. And all of this can be done out of the box on top of ALM very quickly. Okay, so that's uh, that's pretty much concludes the demo. Uh, again, if you have questions about the demo, please type them in. And uh, let's continue. Okay, business case. What can analytics, what, what impact analytics, uh, actually told of you would have a uh, to your organization, how do you calculate a business case? So what we've done, we thought about really the potential savings with all of you. And the potential savings are uh, across different areas. Uh, the first one is, is very obvious, is report automation cost saving. How much can I save by eliminating most of my manual report and instead of that having those automated? And what you save is really the manual effort. Uh, you know, we spoke to program managers that they, they told us they spent hours every day collecting information from the, all the projects, putting it together and just to understand what, you know, what's the status every day, where do they stand and where they need to focus. This whole thing can be eliminated, okay? Now on average, we think we can automate about 70% of the manual reporting. So that's direct savings. People don't do the manual reporting anymore. Instead of that, they do what they should do, probably uh, testing. Okay, the next one, a difficult resolution cost savings. This is a bit more tricky. However, we know that having insights to defects and to the defect lifecycle across the organization, it, it enables you to focus on problematic defects, on blocking defects, and definitely on low quality areas, right? I can tell you which project has the lowest quality, or if you have used a defined field for application, I can tell you which application has the lowest quality. And um, good insights into defect data, we think it would result in at least 5% reduction of defect costs, okay? Uh, the cost of defects, uh, it's a whole very interesting topic, but that's calculated based on industry statistics, studies, and uh, related to the size of the organization, of course. The last one is uh, projects on time. Now we, we know, we have customers who told us that since they have told you, they meet, you know, the deadlines are, are met uh, more often, the projects are, are 
less late in general, okay? Um, so we know that. Um, now, you know, we expect good insights to result up to 50% reduction in project delay costs, right? It doesn't mean that, you know, if now I have 20% of projects late, it's probably not going to drop to 10, but also the amount of days late is going to definitely improve, okay? There are other uh, potential savings uh, which are not easily, not easy to calculate. If you think about uh, the change of culture and uh, improved testing processes, right? Um, better communication, uh, having a single version of the truth for everyone, uh, the, the, the potential savings are very big, but uh, again, uh, they're not very tangible. It's difficult to calculate. Now, when we come to costs, there are uh, several cost items here. First of all, license costs of total view. Uh, you need to take these into account. Uh, implementation costs. What would it take to put this, you know, the, the total view data and, of course, the, the insights for testing on top of it? Uh, infrastructure cost and then personnel costs. How many people, you know, the customer would need to put on this solution to ramp it up and to keep it running? We have quite a lot of experience with it and can make uh, pretty good estimations. And the last thing is really putting it all together and calculating uh, the ROI. And we do have a very nice ROI calculator. So feel free to contact us on that email below. It's info at assure.net. Uh, we can put your figures, your numbers uh, in the Excel sheet and see what we get. All right, a bit about advanced uh, um, topics. Just a couple of things. First of all, the graphic on the right, it's a page from our documentation, right? That's part of the metric catalog I've mentioned. Uh, the calculation is here, how everything is calculated, what are the thresholds and so on. Uh, very useful. Right, so customization. Um, two things. Number one, user-defined fields. These are, as I mentioned, they are automatically added to the data model. Uh, the customization required is to bring them to the UI, right? Um, I showed how to easily do filters, but filters is just one thing. Let's say I'm, I want to see uh, all my testing, but I want it by application on the test. Okay, application on the test would be a user-defined field. Same goes for a test phase, right? For those who work with test phases. Uh, the other one is adding folder structures. Some customers rely heavily on folder structures. They can have one big ALM project and every folder represents an actual testing initiative. Okay, how to deal with that? That's another customization. And then, as I mentioned, we have the full documentation uh, to help you. Now, additional data sources, I touched on that earlier. Uh, there is one example already in the dashboard. These are the business lines and I'll just jump back there. And you can see these are the business line here. That's a customization. This is not part of ALM, okay? So when I select business line, I see everything reflected uh, accordingly. Okay, that's one. Now, other data sources, uh, organizational structures, PMO data, uh, environment downtime, I mean, defects from other systems. We've seen so many different things. Uh, and these are definitely required. All right, so just to recap uh, what I've discussed so far. Um, what you get with, with insights for testing is really cross-project analytics for HPLM immediately out of the box. Behind it, there is a, a really a, a BI solution. There is a data warehouse. It's designed to deal with the ALM project data model, which is not trivial. Um, it's not only extending the HPLM reporting capabilities, it goes way beyond that, right? And um, you get a large collection of metrics that is ready to be used and really enables, a, you know, having multiple ALM data sources. By the way, we can pull from multi-ALM instances as well. A, if you have a, f a metrics framework for, for te or testing, metric, testing metrics framework, Right, it's easy to implement that, and um, yeah, that's pretty much what you get. 
very quickly. So uh, please ask some questions and uh, remember the survey at the end of the at the end of the webinar when you leave. All right. So we got uh, we got a couple of questions here. The one is uh, can you multi-select filters? Well, yeah, absolutely. I think you've seen it uh, uh, during the demo already. That's not a problem. Okay. The other one is what kind of uh, hardware is required? Right. So the hardware you need uh, essentially you need two servers. Okay. A, one of the servers is the backend, and the other server is the frontend. So the backend is the data mart, which collects the information and stores it, and the frontend is is what you've seen on the screen. Uh, it hosts the dashboards. All right. The next question is not surprisingly uh, about licensing. How how is the tool licensed? Uh, so the tool is licensed by the number of users who are using it. Okay, that's that's how we license it. Uh, of course, the the, the more users, uh, the cheaper the price per user becomes. Um, our largest installations have over a thousand users. Okay, these are fairly large enterprises. Okay, the other question is how to integrate additional data sources. So that's that uh, that really varies depending on on the different data source. Um, I can give an example. If we look at something such as a uh, milestones, right? We have we, we've seen customers creating for each. If I go back to the dashboard, right? If I look at the at the different projects, they might have another column here saying that you know an approval has been received or not, or a certain milestone has been met. And so on. Is it a high risk project? We've seen all of these. These come from the really the PMO uh, or project management organization. <clears throat> uh, the way to integrate is you the customer needs to first of all know where the data coming from, obviously, but have have a joint uh, key. And you and normally it would be the project name or ID, right? Because we need to be able to connect both uh, you know both structures together, so we know how they correlate. Uh, that's one example. Okay, I got a question about integrations. How integrations uh, affect uh, the solution. Uh, we love integrations, right? We think having integration is, is excellent. And I'll explain why. Uh, again, we have some customers that they have, uh, they manage defects in, in JIRA, in TFS, in ALM, and God knows what else, right? They have several systems. And some of these organizations are very stubborn. They, they're not going to move to a single system, which is usually ALM. They want to stick with something else. Um, having integration usually simplifies this. And uh, many customers decide ALM is the system of record. It's kind of the master. And an integration would bring all these defects from the other systems or a record of them. They would bring it a, a to ALM, right? So we can see it from ALM. If we don't have integration, we might have to uh, integrate these other data sources as well, which complicates things. Now, with that said, we might still have to go, even if we have an integration, let's say we have an integration between JIRA and ALM, right? So I see the JIRA defects in ALM, which is great. However, not all the information comes from JIRA to ALM, but having an integration enables me to easily access JIRA and know which defect I'm looking at and know which defect corresponds to it in ALM and bring the additional information from JIRA if I want. All right, I have a question about, a, I believe, integration with Genealogics e-approve workflow. Yeah, so that uh, actually Genealogics uh, is now you know, it's been uh, acquired by Avnet, and now we have another company called TX3. We know these guys very well uh, and work closely with them. The the wholly approved process uh, is based on a user-defined field, okay? And it's, again, out of the box, we don't do that, but that's a customization, bringing this 
e approved the relevant fields into the dashboard and reporting on them. You can see your approval, you know, uh, levels, or if you have any artifacts that are not approved and cause problems, uh, you can see all of this information. Uh, another question is if there is any free trial. Uh, the answer is 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 no. It's called, you know it's not uh, just a uh, download and press next and you have it installed. But uh, please contact us at info at assure.net and we'll be happy to uh, to discuss further. Okay, I got um, I got a question about uh, complex metrics uh, such as a quality index. So yes. Uh, we've done we've done these th these things as customized uh, solutions. A uh, quality index is tricky. I I cannot come out of the box and say this is a quality index because every organization is calculating it differently. But as you see here on the screen, right, it's quite easy to take a combination of requirement coverage, defect rejection, test automation, and whatever else you you would like to have, and create a a more complex uh, KPI from it. So yes, this, this can be added. Another one is um, what is the reporting tool used on the front end? Again, this is a short total view, right? However, uh, we do OEM uh, with, with, uh, with a vendor called uh, ClickView. Uh, so this technology is included as part of our solution. Uh, another question, can we interface with other software via XML and or API? So the answer is yes, yes we can. We can integrate with almost any additional data source uh, that I've seen. We've, we've done it through web services and, you know, flat files, Excel, databases, uh, you, you name it. There is really almost anything. So I'd like to, again, thank you all very much for attending this webinar. And uh, please fill in the survey. And thank you very much. And don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you.